Sean Payton has done it again. Another former Saints player has signed with the Broncos. This time, it's wide receiver Marquez Callaway. We're going to break down this move for you guys, get to some stats, get to some highlights and all that good stuff. But Marquez Callaway, you are a Denver Bronco. Jeremy Fowler, the first one on it, tweeting out, Source wide receiver Marquez Callaway plans to sign with the Broncos. Callaway reunites with Sean Payton in 2021. Callaway had a career-high 46 catches, 698 yards, and six touchdowns in Payton's offense. Yesterday, I was at Buffalo Wild Wings watching March Madness. Screw FAU. I don't want to talk about it. But they signed a former Saints running back while on there. So we did a short on that. And now Sean Payton is doubling down within 24 hours, signing another former Saints player. It's kind of funny at this point. I think we can just sort of admit, like, if Sean Payton does not work out for Denver, it'll be because he took this job just to be like Adam Sandler and get all of his buddies on payroll or something because he is bringing coaches over. He's bringing former players over. I mean, it's not terribly surprising, and I really don't have an issue with it. But I think we can all admit, like, it's a bit peculiar just the volume of former Saints players. But I do like this signing because I do think Marquez Callaway has a pretty high ceiling. Like Jeremy Fowler pointed out, nearly 700 yards and six touchdowns. Now, first things first, I want to hear from everyone watching right now. What would your grade be for this Marquez Callaway signing? Give it an A, B, C, D, or F. If you don't know the guy, give it an A. Why don't we stroke his ego a little bit more? My grade, I'm going to go C+. Plus. I'm adding the plus in there because he went to the best school in all of the Southland, the University of Tennessee. So I've got a cool photo to share with you guys later on. I met Callaway at one point, but very excited about this signing because I do think he offers some really good depth at the wide receiver position. Like we said, he had a great season back in 2021 for New Orleans. He had 698 yards and six touchdowns. Now, in college, he was also a big special teamer. Good on punt returns, especially. He housed a kick or two during his time in Knoxville. That was an issue for Denver last season and going back even further than last season. So, this is just another player added throughout free agency, along with Traymond Smith, who is going to bring some competition to the, free, to, uh, to the special teams component of the field. So, Callaway, keep an eye on him during punt returns during the preseason. Now, this is why you subscribe, by the way, right? No matter the size of the signing, no matter how notoriety or notable the player is, we get a video out to you guys. So make sure to hit that sub button and help us reach 13,000 subscribers. Little Birdie told me that if we reach 13,000 subscribers, we'll do 13 shots on the channel. So let's make that happen sooner rather than later. So hit that sub button for the best Broncos coverage. Now, looking at the wide receiver depth chart right now for Denver, you got Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, and then I relegated Cortland Sutton to wide receiver three, right? You can make the argument to really flip these guys in any order you want. You could put Tim Patrick one. You could even put Sutton one or Judy one. But I've got those guys in that order for now. Callaway comes in at four, I think. You got Montreal Washington, who I don't think is a lock to make this roster the way he was a healthy scratch last year or, you know, removed from punt return duties. And I think Brandon Johnson, a former teammate, by the way, of Marquez Callaway, going back to their time at Tennessee, he had some really good flashes last preseason before his ankle injury, and he played some good time, uh, played some good snaps, rather, down the stretch last year. So if Denver's taking five, six receivers, those three, if they're not traded or whatever, are locks to be on this roster. I think Callaway's probably pretty close to a lock. Uh, Kendall Hinton, I thought he would be a lock last year, and he didn't make it, so can't actually rule him in for sure. But it'll be another fun wide receiver training camp battle for the last two to three spots on this roster. Callaway, what does he bring? A lot of speed. That's definitely something he's known for. And he's just a bit of a spark plug, right? He's a playmaker. He's not a slot possession receiver, right? He's not going to go out and do a bunch of short stick routes or whatever. He's a bit of a burner. He's going to help stretch the field. He's going to force the safeties to take an extra step back. So Callaway coming over is going to add some speed to this offense, which 
They really need, because they don't have it in Sutton and Patrick all that much, especially with Patrick coming off an ACL injury. So you got Judy for speed, but now you got some additional speed with Marquez Callaway. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I did get the honor of meeting him. Last year, it was August of 2022. Yep, August, no, August 2021, excuse me. So two years ago now. Um, I was at a taco spot here in Dallas. And remember, that's when a hurricane went through New Orleans. So the Saints couldn't even play their first home game. They beat the shit out of the Packers in Jacksonville. Well, he was behind me in line for this taco spot. And I overheard him talking about practicing at Fort Worth. And I'm like, you look a lot like Marquez Calloway. I know the Saints are practicing in Fort Worth right now. Good shot, your Marquez Callaway. So got a cool picture with him. That was awesome. Marquez, happy to have you with the Broncos now. Now, let's talk a little bit about the wide receiver position as a whole because I was not just I was not gonna talk about Jerry Judy or Cortland Sutton today. I had a whole video planned out about the Broncos potentially moving their stadium, building a new stadium. I'm gonna do that tomorrow now. But with the addition of Marquez Callaway, it does make you wonder, as Denver's adding a receiver here and there, are they doing that because they are in the works of moving on from one of their two starting receivers? Well, Cleveland's out of the Jerry Judy mix, and DeAndre Hopkins to New England is no more. So I don't know if that's going to improve or decrease the probability of Judy going to the Patriots. But there are reports coming out that the team have has been unwilling to meet, or teams, excuse me, have been unwilling to meet the Broncos' asking price for their star receivers. Here's what Jeff Howe from The Athletic wrote. The Broncos have had numerous discussions about Judy and Sutton, and the Cardinals have made calls about Hopkins, according to league sources. But the asking price have remained high on a couple of uh, fronts because the Broncos and Cardinals are hoping to exercise the leverage of having the supply when other teams have the demand. The Broncos have told teams they want at least a first-round pick for Judy, according to league sources. But as rival teams analyze Judy, they're seeing a receiver who has missed time each year with injuries and is yet to amass enough production over long, consistent stretches. That's a very fair point to have against not wanting to give up a first for Jerry Judy, right? If I was New England, I'd probably just use my 14th pick on a wide receiver because Judy's never gone over 1,000 yards. He's had nagging ankle injuries throughout his career. Does he have the potential to be a wide receiver one? Absolutely. Have we seen it over the course of 17 games? No. We saw at the end of last season for six games where he went off, and if you prorated those six games to a full 17-game season, he's a 1,400-yard, eight-touchdown receiver. So that is something teams would definitely give up a first for, but they haven't quite seen it yet. So I think if a trade does happen, I don't want to spend more time on this subject because we spend so much time on it the last two weeks. It would be a draft day trade. I think it would be something where if you know Team X is eyeing three receivers in the first round and they all get picked before them, then they pick up the phone and call Denver and go, all right, we have lost plan A, B, and C in the draft. Plan D is now to give you guys a call and ask about getting Jerry Judy for our 24th pick in the draft, wherever the Giants or Cowboys, or not the Cowboys even more, they got Brandon Cooks, wherever the Giants are picking, for example. So who do you think is more likely to be traded? Jerry Judy or Cortland Sutton? Put the initials for the player down in the comment section. Who you think has a better shot of getting traded? That's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Enjoy watching March Madness. And I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. And we'll talk about the uh, potential new stadium coming for the Broncos.